Hi, Tracy from Salem. Uh, I haven't posted here for a very long time. Um, you know, life. <laughs> um, but I am currently doing uh, K3N's weekly uh, slow stitch project in 2024. Um, I think it's hashtag slow stitch with K3N, K3N as in Nancy. Um, and you can find her videos on YouTube if you, if you enjoy a good, you know, slow stitch a week project. Uh, there, it seems like there's many happening these days on YouTube. This is the one I'm doing. Um, and, and, uh, so each week she has a theme and she creates a little square and, uh, she shows you there, there's a uh, videos that were posted before the, before the, um, project began about how to make your own book to put these little pieces in. Um, I already had a book from, let's see, pre pandemic times. Um, this is a book I made in a class with a different, uh, Instagram person, Willa Wanders. I, I forget exactly what her Instagram uh, name is. Let's see. I'm not getting the whole thing in the shot in the camera. Um, so anyway, this is something I did actually during the pandemic uh, was to create this book. Um, and that was more like a, you know, a journal making thing with and it was more about paper and uh, so I have different tea dyed papers in here and different um, jelly print papers and uh, you know we made signatures and we made little things to put on the paper and so anyway that was a whole big project. I've got dangles. I love me some beady dangles there. Are they on the camera? Kind of, sort of, not really. There. Um, so this book is its own project from, I guess, a couple years ago now. God, was the pandemic a couple years ago? Anyway, so I've got these signatures, different signatures with cloth binding, and then inside is paper. And um, so that's this. So I'm just using this book for the K3N project. Um, and then she just, she just has you sew your pieces right onto the paper. So this is just sewn right onto a sheet. This was the first one, which is called community. And, uh, so it was about weaving, uh, and so some weaving and, um, stitching. And the second one, this one was about what balance. Uh, and the third one was diversity. Um, so I made this. Um, this is inspired by a quilt uh, by a woman who lives in Giesbend, Alabama, or Giesbend, 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 Alabama. And it's this whole community of, of um, women who quilt, African American women who quilt. And it's been passed down like generations. And so it's generations of women who. Who've done quilting and this is a pattern they um have use a lot called the house top or house house top yeah house top i think it's called um so that's my week three i haven't done week four yet but k3n uh her name is katherine and k3n is obviously short for katherine um she also posts a bunch of videos where she shows you some s different slow stitches. Uh, so this particular video that I'm working on right now is about the eyelet stitch. And so you can see I'm doing different kinds of eyelet stitches, um, some with holes, some without. I'll do another one that has where I just cut the top layer. I meant to just cut the top layer on this one, but I went all the way through, oh well. <laughs> uh, so that you can see, you can, so you can either just cut the top layer and have a piece, have the backing fabric show through, or you can cut the top layer and then slip another fabric in. Um, but I cut this whole one, so I, I cut a hole in this one, so 
I guess that's just what I'm going to do now. Um, so just a tiny little, so first I'm just going to, I'm going to catch just the back layer and not the top layer. My little, and then, um, then you just sew, you just do a running stitch around the circle that you've cut. Hopefully I'm on camera. Um. K3N, I, so I just have to like talk her up a little bit more because she's just so delightful. I don't know what it is, um, but ever since the pandemic, I have become kind of addicted to watching older British ladies. I don't she's not old, but she's I think maybe in her I don't know. Maybe she's in her 50s, but maybe she's in her 60s. Um but what I mean is not young. <laughs> not Gen Z. Um older British ladies who hand stitch has just become a very soothing um, thing ever since the pandemic. I have to say I'm also a big fan of um, Kate at the last homely house. I mean, it's just so, yeah, so soothing to watch them. <laughs> Love a good British accent. Um, okay, so once you've sewn your little s circle around, that is the circle that you'll use. And so then, so you can see I'm at the top and I'm just going to go through the hole and I'm going to come up around this circle. And I'm just going to keep coming up around this circle. I'm not going to pull too tight, but I am going to pull firmly. Um, I don't want to, if I pull too tight, I'll start to buckle the um, fabric. I don't want to do that. But I also don't want the stitches to be like floppy and up too high or like too high up. So if I just need to kind of tweak and so the other thing that she talks about is don't try to do the stitches exactly next to each other you just it's not possible what you do what you do is you go around in a loose fashion and then you go around again filling in the gaps and you go around again filling in the gaps until you've filled in all the gaps so this first pass is kind of to make the hole secure. And please do watch um, K3N's video. Um, I'll try to put a link, if I remember, into the, uh, you know, the info box below, because one, as I mentioned, I think a couple of times now, she is delightful. Um, and two, she is been doing this a lot longer than me um, so she's very good at explaining and very good at creating and so it's just always wonderful to watch somebody who's good at what they do so she says don't worry about getting the stitches perfectly in place around well I mean you can do it you, you can do it whatever way you want right you could be very meticulous about making sure they all come out the same length around the hole um, she does not do that I do not do that I enjoy the variety so if you see in this one they they are not all perfectly equidistant um, and I enjoy that variety um, you can also, as you see I've done here, you can use different colors. So I did two passes with the light peach and then the final pass with the darker peach. Um, on this one I did two passes with a, with a variegated blue and then um, with this variegated blue and then I came in and did the final pass with this variegated kind of sea foamy, which is turns out to be pretty much the color of the background. Um, but that's just what I did. Um, so I'm not sure what, how, what, if I will 
do a third color or if I will leave this actually solid because I really love this blue against this seafoam green piece of, uh, I guess it's cheesecloth. Yeah, I guess it's cheesecloth that I dyed um, at some point. Uh, not with any kind of professionalism whatsoever. <laughs> I was like, again, I'm pretty sure this was during the pandemic um, when I was just doing any anything to entertain myself. I, so I live alone. And so it was, you know, 18 months in my house. Um, and I would go and visit my parents and sit, like we'd sit in the garage and I would sit in the driveway and they'd sit in the garage and I would go s do their grocery shopping for them. And then we would sit and talk and that was like the extent of my human contact for the duration of that, of those 18 months of, of lockdown, essentially. Um, I think in other countries, I think they would have lockdown for a couple of weeks and then they would be set free and then they'd have another lockdown for a couple of weeks, whatever. I, I mean, basically, I just, they just made everything remote at my workplace and I just, yeah. So I did a lot of things to entertain myself is the point of that. Um, and dyeing this cheesecloth was one of those things. So now I've done my first pass. So you can see it's, it's not, um, completely perfect all the way around. I don't, I don't like that for just for myself. Um, and which is funny because I am a first A, a first child type A personality. Um, and so one of the, so now I'm going to go around again and go filling in the spaces. So I would say that um, stitching, which, which I picked up, hand stitching, during the pandemic, basically, you know, I, did, I had no formal training. And uh, the whole concept of kind of perfectly aligning things and perfectly making matchy-matchy not only eluded me, um, just, I just... I can't sort of, I don't know, dexterity, from a dexterity point of view, I just can't kind of manage that. <laughs> um, but then I think also, you know, it was, it was a pandemic. Do you remember that? Do you remember how crazy it was? Um, and I think I just, you know, I let go of that perfectionism in myself and said like hey here's this totally new thing if you want to do, do it just go just go just do it just fall down the rabbit hole and don't let perfectionism get in your way and I think that's what happened so um I'm just making those stitches life ladder um yeah. So anyway, I do not strive to have all of my um, threads, thread trails, whatever, what do you call each one of these? I don't know. Um, but I do not strive to have them perfectly uh, equidistant from the whole. I don't strive to have the whole be a perfect circle. And... I just enjoy the pleasure of the needle passing through the cloth and the way that the pattern begins to fill in. Um, I have to say like these little threads constantly coming out of the cheesecloth, I could, I mean, could do without that <laughs> but otherwise it's just the it's just about the pleasure of stitching and I had to tell you that I never imagined that I would be so enamored my grandmother gave me a sewing box when I was really young she taught me how to crochet um granny squares and I think she tried to teach me to knit. God, I really had wanted nothing to do with that. And she gave me a sewing box. And I remember, I remember just being so 
I don't know, I was both pleased and bummed out because I really wanted nothing to do with anything that I considered girly. And because uh, I was a tomboy. And so, wow, I wish I had that sewing box now, though. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Anyway, I'm sure, I'm sure she's getting a good laugh wherever she is now. That I am so, so into hand stitching. All right, so I've, I've gone all the way around twice and it's, it's pretty much entirely filled in. There's one, I would, I would love to get a stitch there, a stitch there. So anyway, now I'm, essentially I'm done. I'm gonna go just drop the needle through the hole. And um, I'm going to, exactly where I came up, I'm going to lay the thread down and just pass it under the thread, the uh, threads that are already there so that that last stitch lays flat. And I think that I am just going to go around the circle to that one spot that I feel like it kind of needs one more right here. Really feels like it needs one more stitch here. Hmm. I didn't quite do that as effectively as I wanted, so I'm just going to take one more stitch. There. And then again, right where I come up, I'm just going to lay it down and hold it there and then go under the threads so that the last stitch lays flat. And then I'm going to just kind of do a, go backwards a little bit and then forwards a little bit under these threads. And voila. Voila. So I'm going to keep, keep on doing little eyelets around here. And I'll probably put in some, maybe I'm going to do a, something around the big circle, another circle around the big circle. I don't know, but you can check me out on Instagram to see the final piece whenever that is done. Thanks for hanging out.